Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. I know it's been a couple of weeks since I've had a research and development video, but I'm finally back with one. The footage you're seeing on screen right now was uh, recorded a while ago, and the conveyor belt web shooter, the Ben Riley web shooter project, has some really cool developments coming up, and I'm excited to share those with you guys. I'm currently manufacturing those designs, if you can hear my 3D printer in the background. But, uh... Yeah, I wanted to have another video on that before I had a video on the cartridges and stuff. And that's just not going to happen um, because the project, you know, I don't have a lot filmed for it right now. But I do have stuff filmed for the cartridge project, so I'd rather just get a video out on that first. And the video on the belt will come soon after, probably even within a week. So in this video, you're going to see updates on the cartridge project and I hope you guys enjoy it. All right guys, so as I talked about in the last video about these fittings, we need to test to see if they can withstand the pressure of R134A. Uh, yeah, so here I am setting up the system. Uh, before we do that, I'm gonna give you guys some talking points about why the R134A pressure, vapor pressure matters, how that works. It's gonna be a science lesson, so strap in for that. It's gonna be about 10 minutes, then we'll get onto the actual pressure test. So if you don't really care about the science, uh, you can skip ahead, but I think there's some really cool information in here that I hope you guys enjoy. We're using the chemical R134A, otherwise known as tetrafluoroethane. R134A is the refrigerant name all refrigerants are given that name. Refrigerant is just a, a chemical that's required for refrigeration and it you know changes phases from liquid to gas and in between and that uh, transfers energy from one place to another in order to cool things down. That's the basic gist of it. So we're gonna be looking in this thermodynamics textbook by Borganaki and Sontag uh, for some R134A properties and we're gonna talk about why those matter. All right, so we are in Appendix B, Thermodynamic Tables, and this gives us a lot of useful properties. So you have things like specific volume, which is, if you don't know, the reciprocal of density. You have internal energy, and the subscript F here means of the fluid. The subscript gas here means of the gas. This number right here is just the difference between the two. You have specific enthalpy and specific entropy. You can see these are the properties for water. Saturated water means it's a mixture of gas and liquid. Basically that means that this is what's going on while water is in the process of boiling off. So you can see if we go to uh, the uh, 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of water, we see we're at exactly 103.1 kilopascals which is atmospheric pressure. So basically what this tells us, uh, alongside a lot of other information, is that, that uh, at atmospheric pressure, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, if we were at a higher pressure, say 475 kilopascals, different planet, you know, what have you, water would boil at a much higher temperature. And once we go lower than atmospheric pressure, when you get closer to a vacuum, water boils at lower and lower temperatures. Basically, to get water to boil at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, we need to put it in an environment where the atmospheric pressure is 3.169 kilopascals, which is not a lot. Like I said, we gotta go on to R134A, and we're gonna talk about what properties are important. All right, so you can see I've left some notes here as this is a very important page for me, but we're just gonna focus on what's in these tables. So at 25 degrees Celsius, we see that R134A boils at 666.3 kilopascals. What exactly is this telling us? So saturated R134A, right? Saturated. So this this means it's a mixture of, of gas and liquid. You know, in a container, we have the container at 25 degrees Celsius, the pressure inside the container has to be at 666.3 kilopascals. So I've said it before and I'll say it again. R134A is the key to how the web fluid currently works. It is a solvent for polymethyl methacrylate, a polymer that's used a lot in various industries. When that's dissolved, it's a liquid. 
R134A boils off and then the solid is left behind. That's how it's a liquid inside the container and a solid outside the container. So if we go to the next page, we have tables on what's called superheated R134A. And you can see here, we have 100 kilopascals and that can be at any temperature. So when we go back to saturated R134A, you can see if we're at 25 degrees C, room temperature, we have to be at 666.3 kilopascals. There's no two ways about it. If there's a liquid and a gas present of both states, that's just how it has to be. Um, and basically, it's because it's in the process of, of boiling off. One way to think about it is the gas in the chamber is exerting a pressure on the liquid that's keeping the liquid liquid, keeping it from evaporating and joining the gas in that state. Uh, they call this also the vapor pressure. Um, so at 25 degrees C, the vapor pressure is 666.3. So what this also means is that the R134A is a propellant. And this is common in all sorts of aerosol cans, all sorts of things. Shaving cream uses isobutane as a propellant, which is something that I've used in my channel uh, years back. If you want to check out those very old videos, I use that as the propellant for my web shooters. So now I'm using R134A. Uh, it has a higher vapor pressure. Uh, so the pressure in the container is constant at that vapor pressure provided your your temperature is constant as long as there is liquid R134A in the container. And basically how this happens is the uh, the the some R134A will be let out of the container, but the pressure doesn't drop because some of the liquid R134A that's in the container evaporates and joins the gas R134A and keeping the pressure constant. Uh, as soon as as the R134A is gone, then the pressure will drop to whatever the atmospheric pressure is. But as long as there's even a little tiny drop of R134A in that container, the pressure in the container is 666.3 kilopascals. So like I said, atmospheric pressure is 101.3 kilopascals. So obviously this is very high. I like to think of things in terms of PSI and don't come at me with that Spider-Man cartoon that talked about increasing the pressure 200 PSI. Don't ask me to do that because I can't do that because of this very fundamental physical law of gases that, you know, once they're in a saturation point, uh, you can't change the temperature without changing the, the pressure. There's just, you just can't do it. And if you want an example of how this looks graphically, uh, you can take a look at these PT, PV, and TV diagrams. On the PV and TV diagrams, this is pressure, volume, temperature, and volume. Uh, this shape right here on both is called the saturation dome. And so anything that's inside of the saturation dome is a saturated state. And over here on this side, uh, where the volume is bigger, you have gas. And over here on the other side, you have pure liquid. Uh, and over here on the PT diagram, this is a good way to visualize it as we're talking about pressure and temperature. Uh, you have liquid and vapor. This is solid. Uh, liquid, vapor, and along this line that's here called the saturation line. If you're at a certain temperature you have to be at a certain pressure. So you can see here at 30 degrees uh, you have to be at and, uh, 1167 in pressure. I don't know what the units are here. So these lines are called isotherms which means they're at a constant temperature. Uh, this one is 30 degrees C. You can see when you're inside the saturation dome you're also at a constant pressure. This line is straight. Same thing for 25 degrees C and 1000. So on the TV diagram these lines are called isobars which means you're at a constant pressure. And so uh, once you're, so if you're at 1167 kilopascals uh, inside the saturation dome you're maintaining a constant 30 degrees C. That's that's what this looks like graphically. I've always thought this was this was super interesting. So if we want to convert kilopascals to PSI, I like to think about PSI. PSI atmospheric pressure uh, is 14.7. The gauge pressure you put in your tires is usually like 32 PSI. Let's see comparatively like how much is 666.3. Okay, so 666.3 kilopascals is 96.6 PSI. 
that's a lot uh, comparatively that's you know like more than six times the atmosphere pretty powerful stuff that's that's one of the reasons why I, uh, I, I, I'm using this instead of isobutane is because it's more powerful. Isobutane's vapor pressure is only around 30 psi, and that's on a, you know, a, 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 in a warm environment, maybe 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Here we are in the English unit tables where we have the more familiar to my American friends, Fahrenheit and psi. Psi A just means actual pressure, not gauge pressure, which basically means uh, atmospheric pressure in PSI A is 14.7, atmospheric pressure in PSI G is zero. Basically relating to the ambient. PSI G means gauge pressure, PSI A is actual pressure. So here we are in the R134A English unit tables. If we go to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, we get to 85 PSI A. So 70 gives us 85 and that's probably because 70 degrees Fahrenheit is a little bit less than 25. 70 degrees Fahrenheit is the temperature it is in my house right now, so 85 PSI is what we will get. Might be a little warmer than 70, so maybe 90 will come out uh, during this test, but we will find out. All right, guys, so here we have our pressure test set up. Uh, we have R134A right here. You can see that's the colorless liquid. It's under pressure right now, and this valve is closed, so the pressure isn't in the rest of the system yet. Uh, this would be a gas if it were at atmospheric pressure, um, but uh, it's currently under its own vapor pressure, so should be around like 90 PSI or so. We're gonna figure out exactly how much that is. Um, I don't know what temperature it is in here right now. My thermostat says 70 degrees Fahrenheit, so we're just gonna go with that as the room temperature. So we've got our pressure gauge right here. Needle should go to about 90 is what I'm hypothesizing. I'm gonna open this valve, have this far away. We're gonna see both what pressure we have and if this push to connect fitting can hold that pressure. So let's try that out. It's very far away. All the seals should be good. All right, so I just wanted the pressure gauges to be as visible as possible. Uh, I'm about to open the valve and we will see what happens. All right, so this is looking good. Everything is stable, nothing is broken. R134A is still liquid. It's currently in the tubes, I think. Let's see. Yeah, you can see it there in the tubes. So the pressure is just about 90, as I predicted. Now, I hear leaking somewhere. Now, obviously, this compression fitting isn't breaking. Now, I do hear leaking. Let's see if we can't fix that. Still hear it a little bit. Pressure has gone up. About 95 now. I don't know what caused that. There's only one way to find out where the leak is coming from. So I'm still hearing leaking. I've got some soapy water here. Usually people hold uh, pressure systems underwater and see if there are bubbles, but this is another good way to do it. Hmm. The pressure is still at 95. So it should blow bubbles, and there's a leak. I'm not seeing any. Hmm. 
Ah, just a little bit. Right there. And I'm not seeing anything really from over here. Really just These fittings are not probably super reliable. Which is something that I could have guessed. But it's good to know anyway. All right. Pressure's still at, uh, at uh, 90, so. All right, so these fittings clearly wouldn't work for our system. Uh, don't count them out just yet in all for my projects. I still have five of them. I assume they're pretty useful. I might need to use more rigid tubes with them in order for that to work, but that uh, kind of restricts them from being arm cartridges because I need the long flexible tube. They could be used for removable cartridges for a simple wrist web shooter. In the meantime, I'm gonna find some better compression fittings. The threads on these are kind of tight and they don't go very far. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I want to thank all my patrons, Jacob Lawrence, J-Dubs Animation, Mimo, Jeff Zachary, Woodhurst, Green Ninja, The Arachnids, Christopher Jordan, Nicholas Sykes, Caleb Choice, and Spider Noah. Thank you guys so much. I wouldn't be able to do this without you. And I will see you guys in the next video, and I hope that comes out very quickly.